Hi everyone, welcome to our part 6 NMC CBT questions, which included our 126 to 150 questions and answers for those preparing for CBT. In this video, we have included 25 multiple choice questions with answers. Besides, each answer comes with an answer reference, and that will help you to answer any other questions related to the same topic. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 1. Which do you think is not a stage in the Tuckman theory of contingency? Option A. Forming. Option B. Analyzing. Option C. Storming. Option D. Norming. Correct answer is option B. Analyzing. According to Tuckman's theory of contingency the forming, storming, norming, and performing are the phases that are necessary and inevitable in order for a team to grow, face up to challenges, tackle problems, find solutions, plan work, and deliver results. Question 2. Jim needs to receive his eye drops after his cataract operation. What is the best position for Jim to assume when instilling the eye drops? Option A, sitting position, head tilted backwards. Option B, supine position for comfort. Option C, standing position to facilitate drainage. Option D, recovery position. Right answer is option A. Sitting position, head tilted backwards. The best position when instilling the eye drops after cataract operation is the sitting position, head tilted backwards. Question 3. In your perspective, who is responsible for the strict disposal of sharks? Option A, doctor. Option B, the one who used the sharks. Option C, registered nurse. Option D, nurse assistant. Right answer is option B. The one who used the sharps. As a nurse, you should know the methods used for the sharp disposal, and it is the responsibility of healthcare workers those who used the sharps. Question 4. Joy, a COPD patient, is to be discharged in the community. As her nurse, which of the following interventions will you encourage him to do to prevent the progression of disease? Option A, cessation of smoking. Option B, coughing exercise. Option C, oxygen therapy. Option D, breathing exercise. Answer is option A, cessation of smoking. The best way to encourage the COPD patient upon discharge, the nurse can give counseling about medication and self-management, which includes cessation of smoking. Question 5. Mrs. Smith is receiving blood transfusion after her total hip replacement operation. After 15 minutes, when you went back to check her vital signs, and she complained of high temperature and loin pain. What is this indicated for? Option A, serious adverse reaction. Option A, renal colic. Option C, urine infection. Option D, common adverse reaction. Option A is the right answer. Serious adverse reaction. In general, any adverse clinical event that occurs during a blood transfusion should be considered a transfusion reaction. The most frequently occurring adverse reactions are fever, chills, and urticaria. The most frequently occurring serious adverse reactions are acute hemolytic transfusion reactions. We encourage you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 6. In reporting contagious diseases, which of the following will need to take attention at the national level? Option A, measles. Option B, tuberculosis. Option C, chickenpox. Option D, swine flu. Option A and B are the correct answers. Measles and tuberculosis. The most contagious diseases, which need to take attention at the national level are measles and tuberculosis. Question 7. Which of the following is a potential complication of putting an oropharyngeal airway adjunct? 
Option A, bradycardia. Option B, obstruction. Option C, nasal injury. Option D, retching, vomiting. Option D is the right answer. Retching and vomiting. The potential complication of putting an oropharyngeal airway adjunct is that can induce vomiting and which may lead to aspiration. Question 8. Which of the following is an average heart rate of a 1 to 2 year old child? Option A, 140 to 160 beats per minute. Option B, 80 to 120 beats per minute. Option C, 110 to 120 beats per minute. Option D, 60 to 100 beats per minute. Answer is option B, 80 to 120 beats per minute. In general, 1 to 2 year old children with an average heart rate is 80 to 130 beats per minute. Question 9. How can a clinical audit be best described? Option A, a tool is used to identify the weakest link within the system. Option B, a standard of which performance is based upon. Option C, a tool to set guidelines or protocol in clinical practice. Option D, a tool to evaluate the effectiveness of interventions and to know what needs to be improved. Option D is the correct answer. A tool to evaluate the effectiveness of interventions and to know what needs to be improved. Particularly, clinical audit is a quality improvement process that seeks to improve patient care and outcomes through a systematic review of care. Question 10. After the handover, you noticed that the outgoing nurse documented an intervention on the wrong patient chart. What should you do to correct it, maintain safety, and continuation of care? Option A, leave it, never alter patient record. Option B, inform the nurse manager, let her draw a line on the entry, and place her name and signature. Option C, discard the paper or document. Option D, cross the wrong entry with a line, indicated as an error, write the date, time, name, and signature, document the care correctly. Answer is option D. Cross the wrong entry with a line, indicated as an error, write the date, time, name, and signature, document the care correctly. If an error entered in the medical record, you should follow the proper error correction procedure, which is to cross the wrong entry with a line, indicated as an error, write the date, time, name, and signature, document the care correctly. We recommend you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test, and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 11. In your opinion, which of the following population groups are at risk of developing cardiovascular disease? Option A, female, 40, fertile. Option B, smoker, diabetic, and alcoholic. Option C, drug user, male, hypertensive. Option D, obese, male, diabetic, hypertensive, sedentary lifestyle. Option B, C, D are the right answers. Smoker, diabetic and alcoholic, drug user, male, hypertensive, obese, male, diabetic, hypertensive and sedentary lifestyle. The most population groups are at risk of developing cardiovascular disease are smoker, diabetic and alcoholic, drug user, male, hypertensive, obese, male, diabetic, hypertensive, and sedentary lifestyle. Question 12. The current Chief Nursing Officer of England called for all nurses to be caremakers and encouraged to embed the six C's in their practice. What is meant by six C's? Option A, care, cure, compassion, competence, communication, commitment. Option B, care, competence, compassion, communication, commitment, cohesion. Option C, care, collaboration, communication, compassion, commitment, competence. Option D, care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, commitment. The correct answer is option D. Care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, commitment. The strategy included the six C's are care, compassion, competence, communication, courage, commitment. Question 13. Braid, 76 years old, 
developed a pressure ulcer whilst under your care. On assessment, you saw some loss of the dermis, with visible redness, but not sloughing off. Using these data, can you recognize her pressure ulcer is in what stage? Option A, second stage partial skin thickness. Option B, third stage. Option C, fourth stage. Option D, moisture lesion. Answer is option A. Second stage partial skin thickness. As a nurse you should know the stages of pressure ulcer. At stage 2, the skin breaks open, wears away or forms an ulcer, which is usually tender and painful. The sore expands into the deeper layer of the skin. It can look like a scrape, blister, or a shallow crater in the skin. Question 14. Jenny was admitted to your ward with severe bleeding after 48 hours following her labor. What is the stage of postpartum hemorrhage is she experiencing? Option A, secondary. Option B, tertiary. Option C, emergency. Option D, primary. Option A is the correct answer. Secondary. Generally, secondary postpartum hemorrhage occurs between 24 hours and 6 weeks following the childbirth. Question 15. Adam is 46 years old, and he is a Jewish descent. As his nurse, how will you plan his dietary needs? Option A. Assume he strictly needs Jewish food. Option B. Ask the patient about his diet preferences. Option C. Ask relatives to bring food from the kosher market. Option D. Ask a rabbi to help you plan. Correct answer is option B. Ask the patient about his diet preferences. As a nurse you should always ask the patient about the diet preferences upon admission. We encourage you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 16. What do you think which of the following are qualities of a good leader, except? Option A, does not accept criticisms from members. Option B, shows empathy to members. Option C, his behavior contributes to the team. Option D, acknowledges and accepts members' mistakes without any corrections. Option A is the right answer. Does not accept criticisms from members. Well, one of the most important qualities of leadership is being a good listener. Listening to criticism is a leadership responsibility. Question 17. Joshua, the son of Braid went to the station to see the nurse, as she was complaining of severe pain in her pressure ulcer. What will be your initial action? Option A, check analgesia on the chart. Option B, go immediately to see the patient. Option C, Tell you will come as soon as you can. Option D. Find the nurse in charge. Right answer is option B. Go immediately to see the patient. Particularly, patients with pressure also report that pain is their most distressing symptom. Pain reported by patients will be at risk so as a nurse you can immediately attend the patient. Question 18. John has also been prescribed some medications for his gout. Which of the following health teaching will you advise him to do? Option A, have enough sunshine. Option B, avoid paracetamol, first line analgesic. Option C, increase fluid intake 2 to 3 liters per day. Option D, avoid dairy products. Answer is option C. Increase fluid intake 2 to 3 liters per day. As a nurse, you should know how to manage gout and to eliminate uric acid. It may be helpful to drink plenty of water to eliminate uric acid from the kidneys. So the best advice you can give is to teach them to increase fluid intake 2 to 3 liters per day. Question 19. Who is responsible for safeguarding in the UK? Option A, doctor. Option B, registered nurse. Option C, nurse assistant. Option D, all of the above. Answer is option D all of the above. As a responsible professional you should know, everyone who works with children has a responsibility for keeping them safe. Question 20. When you are doing your shift assessment, 
One of your patients has a Waterloo score of 20. Which of the following mattress is appropriate for this score? Option A, low air loss. Option B, alternating pressure. Option C, water bed. Option D, fluidized air bed. Option B is the correct answer. Alternating pressure. When your patient has a Waterloo score of 20, you should provide an alternating pressure mattress, which is particularly important to prevent and manage pressure injury for patients who cannot be repositioned frequently. We gently remind you to take an online test after completing this section and check your score. Questions and options will be shuffled and given when you take an online test and this challenge will really help you to thorough the answers. You can take test from the first link in the description. Question 21. While effectively planning the therapy for Jenny after postpartum hemorrhage, which of the following indicators will be considered to check together with prothrombin time PT? Option A, activated prothrombin time. Option B, bleeding time. Option C, thrombin time. Option D, INR. Answer is option A activated prothrombin time. As you know, coagulation profile is done to determine proper concentration of coagulation factors in the blood. This test includes two tests, which is activated partial thromboplastin time test and prothrombin time test. Question 22. John, 18 years old is preparing for discharge and will require a further dose of oral antibiotics. As his nurse, which of the following will you advise him to do? Option A, take all antibiotics and as prescribed. Option B, take with food or after meals and ensure to take all antibiotics as prescribed. Option C, take medicine during the day and ensure to finish the course of medication. Option D, take medicine and stop when he feels better. Option A is the correct answer. Take all antibiotics and as prescribed. As a nurse, you should advise the patient about the importance of prescribed antibiotics, the time of next dose, and the duration of the medication. Question 23. Barbara is an elderly patient with dementia, wishes to go out of the hospital. What will be your appropriate action? Option A, inform the police to arrest the patient. Option B, allow her to leave, she is stable and not at risk of anything. Option C, call the police, Make sure she does not leave. Option D, encourage the patient to stay for his well-being. Option D is the right answer. Encourage the patient to stay for his well-being. Always encourage the patient to keep physically active as this will help strengthen balance and maintain confidence. Question 24. As an infection prevention and control protocol, linens soiled with infectious bodily fluids should be disposed of by what means? Option A, placed in the yellow plastic bag to be disposed of. Option B, placed in the red plastic bag to be incinerated at high temperature. Option C, placed in the yellow linen bag and washed at high temperature. Option D, placed in the dissolvable red linen bag and washed at high temperature. Correct answer is option D. Placed in the dissolvable red linen bag and washed at high temperature. According to the infection control protocol, Linens soiled with infectious bodily fluids should be placed in the dissolvable red linen bag and washed at high temperature. Question 25. Mr. Khan went to visit his son in London. When he was admitted to the hospital with an accident and emergency due to abdominal pain. Mr. Khan is from Pakistan and does not speak the English language. As his nurse, what is your best action? Option A, ask for an official interpreter. Option B, ask the relative. Option C, ask a cleaner who speaks the same. Option D, transfer him to another hospital who can communicate with him. Right answer is option A. Ask for an official interpreter. We should expect an official interpreter for interpretation and can make effective communication among the healthcare workers. If you find our pinpointed presentation useful, please like our video. More precise medical subjects will be uploaded in the coming days. To get the notification, consider subscribing our channel. Visit our YouTube channel for more clear-cut medical subjects.
Thanks for watching.